Let us recall what we have been doing with the system of equations A x equal to B. It was all based on the various bases that we chose for the 4 spaces. So, let us recall we had these 4 fundamental spaces the range of A transpose the null space of A and the range of A and the null space of A transpose these are subspaces on the R n side and these are subspaces on the R m side and A is a transformation from R n to R m and A transpose is a transformation and the basis that we chose aware like B 1 B 2 B rho is an orthonormal basis for the range of A transpose phi 1 phi 2 phi nu A was an orthonormal basis for the null space of A u 1 u 2 u rho was an orthonormal basis for the range of A and psi 1 psi 2 psi nu A transpose was an orthonormal basis for the null space of A transpose and the crucial relationship were that A V j was S j u j and A transpose u j was S j v j for 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to rho. This was our fundamental choice of the orthonormal basis. Now, we were analyzing how to use this choice of the basis in the analysis of the system of equation. What we found was that the consistency condition for that B has to satisfy can now be written as B must be orthogonal to all the basis vectors of the null space of A transpose and therefore, there are m minus rho conditions because the nullity of A transpose is m minus the rank by the rank nullity theorem. So, there are m minus rho conditions that B has to satisfy. Then we looked at the case when B satisfies these conditions when B satisfies these conditions what are the results that we had solution exists that is the first thing solution to the system A x equal to B exists and the solution is unique if the rank is equal to n and the unique solution in this case is given by x equal to summation j equal to 1 to rho where in this case rho equal to n 1 by s j b u j v j where s j is as we mentioned above are the singular values of the matrix A. Then if B is less than N, I am sorry, if rho is less than N, the rank of the matrix is less than N, then there are infinite number of solutions. There are infinite number of solutions given by all of them can be written in the following form x equal to summation j equal to 1 to rho now rho is less than n 1 by s j b u j v j the b u j s are the components of b in the direction u j plus summation k equal to 1 to nu a alpha k phi k where the alpha k where alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha nu a can be chosen arbitrarily can be chosen arbitrarily in R. So, when rho was equal to n we got unique solution 
when rho is less than n we get infinite number of solutions then among these infinite solutions the solution x we call optimal which is j equal to 1 to rho 1 by s j b u j v v j. This is obtained by taking all the alpha k's to be 0 all the arbitrary constants alpha k to be 0 and this is called the optimal solution it has the lowest length of among all solutions. So, thus when we have B satisfies the consistency condition where solution exists unique if rho equal to n it is given by the expression x equal to this whole thing and when rho is less than n we have infinite number of solutions all of them are characterized as this and we have the optimal solution which is given by this expression. So, now we are having known what happens when the consistency conditions are satisfied we can get our answers about the solutions purely in terms of the basis that we have chosen. So, the next we looked at the case when B does not satisfy the consistency condition satisfy the consistency condition. This is the case that we have to deal with and we observed last time that what this means is that for any x in R n a x it cannot be equal to b what this means is a x belongs to the range of a, but b does not satisfy the condition means b does not belong to the range of a. So, a x and b can never match each other therefore, we consider the error we consider the error e b x as the length of the vector a x minus b and we look for xl a vector xl in rn such that this error is minimum that is if you take the error we can even take the square error that will be less than or equal to the error obtained from any other vector that is xl get as close to a, a, uh, the vector b as possible under the transformation a. So, therefore, hence a xl belongs to the range of a first thing because it is a of something and a x l is closest to b in the range of a. But we know that the vector closest to the range of a is b r. So, any such vector x l which you takes us to closest to b is called a least square solution such an x l is called a least square solution actual excel is called a least square solution ok. So, now how do we get this least square solutions we know that a x l gets closest to b and it is in the range of a, but b can be written as b equal to b r plus b n where b r is the projection of b onto the range of a. So, we write b r that projection is j equal to 1 to rho b u j u j that is the projection in the range of a and b n is the projection of b on the null space of Now, we know that the vector in the range of a which is closest to b is given by b r and which we have seen while studying the orthogonal projections. We know that the vector 
in the range of A closest to B is the orthogonal projection of B onto range of A and which is B R. So, therefore, we are trying to make x l go to b r. So, the x l we are looking for the least square solution x l we are looking for must be such that a x l equal to b r. So, therefore, least square solutions or solutions of the system A x equal to B r. Now, this system has a solution because B r is in the range of A and it satisfies the <coughs> consistency condition. Since B r is in the range of A, any vector in the range of A is perpendicular to all the vectors in the null space of A transpose because range of A and the null space of A transpose are orthogonal complements. So, we have it satisfies the consistency conditions. B r comma psi j equal to 0 1 less than or equal to j less than or equal to nu a transpose. And therefore, the system A x equal to B r has a solution and hence we get always a yeah, least square solution when B does not belong to range of A that is when B does not satisfy consistency conditions. So, now let us analyze this least square solution. Now, a x equal to b r, b r satisfies the consistency conditions. We have seen how to get the solutions when the consistency conditions are satisfied. So, from our knowledge which we mentioned in the beginning of the course, from our knowledge for the case of consist case of the system when R H S satisfies consistency conditions. Look at that we have studied. We know that there were two cases rho is equal to n and rho is less than n. When rho equal to n unique solution for A x equal to B r. Therefore, unique least square solution because any solution for A x equal to B r is least square solution. Now, we have a unique solution therefore, unique least square solution and given by x l from our work earlier with the case when consistency conditions are satisfied 1 by s j. Now, the right hand side is B r. So, it is B r u j into B j. However, it is easy to see that the B r u j is the same as B of u j. The projected vector and the original vector have the same component in the projected space. So, this less than or equal to and therefore, the unique least square solution is given by 
x l equal to j equal to 1 to rho in this case rho equal to n 1 by s j b r u j b j. So, thus when the rank is n consistency conditions are not satisfied there is a unique least square solution and it is given by this expression. On the other hand when rho is less than n a x equal to b r has infinite number of solutions, but any solution of this a x equal to b r is called the least square solution. Therefore, we have infinite number of least square solutions. So, we have an infinite number of least square solutions what are they? They are all given by we know that when the rho is less than n all the solutions are given by in the case when consistency condition is satisfied and because b r satisfies the consistency conditions it is 1 by s j b r u j v j plus the arbitrariness comes from the fact that there is rank less than n. So, that will be the arbitrariness always come from the null space of a where alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k can be chosen arbitrarily can be chosen arbitrarily. So, now again among these infinite solutions the one consisting of only the range of A transpose part that is those involving V 1, V 2, V rho that part gives us a vector which is a least square solution and which has the least length and therefore, it is called the optimal solution. The solution which we will call as least square optimal which consists of only the unambiguous part 1 by s j b u j b j. Notice that this b r u j can again be written as this is equal to b u j also as we observed above. So, therefore, in the case when rho is less than n consistency condition is not satisfied least square solution exists there are infinite number of least square solutions given by this and among all this there is one which has least length and that is unique and that is called the optimal least square solution. So, therefore, in all the cases whether the system satisfies the consistency condition or not we always have a representation for the type of solution that we are looking for in each case in terms of the orthonormal basis that we have chosen. In the case when rho is equal to n whether you are looking for a regular solution in the case when b satisfies the conditions or the least square solution when b does not we always get a unique solution this is what you notice that in the case rho equal to n in the case of least square also we got unique solutions and we had seen last time that in the case when regular solution with consistency condition satisfied then also we get least square solution. Similarly, in the case rho e less than n we got infinite number of solutions whether in the case of con, uh, regular solutions or in the case of least square solutions and therefore, we always look for optimal solutions. So, let us now summarize this if you notice in all these cases the final solution we are looking for is of the form summation j equal to 1 to rho 
1 by S j B u j B j. Now, what does this represent? This represents let us see when B satisfies consistency condition and rho equal to n then that represent that this whole expression represents represents in this case when B satisfies consistency condition and rho equal to n that represent that expression there represents the unique the uniqueness is because of the fact rho is equal to n unique solution for a x equal to b. When b satisfies when rho is less than n that same expression represents the unique optimal solution of the system. And when B does not satisfy, when B does not satisfy consistency condition, the same expression again when rho equal to n represents now not the unique solution, but the unique least square solution. Lewis square solution and when rho is less than n it represents the unique optimal least square solution unique optimal least square solution. Now, from this you observe that whenever you add the case rho equal to n whether in the case of consistency or inconsistency that is whether you are looking for exact solution or least square solution you are always getting uniqueness. But when rho is less than n in both the cases we got infinite number of solutions, but we got unique optimal solution and all these things that final solution whether it is the unique exact solution that is in this case or the unique least square solution that is in this case or the unique optimal solution that is in this case or that is unique optimal least square solution in this case the representation of the solution is exactly this this depends on rho now. So, it will vary the summation index will vary in all these cases. So, now we have the answer for the uh, solution of the system of equation in terms of the basis that we have chosen completely whatever the case may be we know the consistency condition we know what happens when the consistency condition is satisfied when the consistency condition is satisfied we know when the solution is unique and when the solution is infinite and when the solution is unique we know what the unique solution is and when the solution is infinite number we know all of them and we know the representative solution which is the optimal solution. When B does not satisfy the consistency condition we know that least square solutions exist and we know when the least square solution is unique, we know when the least square solution is infinite, we know when the least square solution is unique what is that solution and when the least square solution is infinite we know what are all those least square solutions and we know what is the unique representative optimal least square solutions and all these are obtained in terms of the basis we chose. The consistency condition comes from the basis for the null space of A. remember the consistency condition B psi j equal to 0 for 1 less than or equal to 0. So, it comes from 
sorry, one less than or equal to nu a transpose j less comes from the b psi j's which are the orthonormal basis for the null space of a transpose. So, first a priori the consistency conditions are determined for the basis that we have chosen for the null space of A transpose. Okay. Then the next is when consistency conditions satisfied by B when rho equal to n we know that the unique solution the unique solution is determined by the expression summation j equal to 1 to rho 1 by s j b u j b j and you see that this is completely determined by the v j's and the u j's and the s j's. So, it is completely determined by completely determined by the orthonormal basis for the range of A transpose, the range of A and the singular value. And the, when I say the orthonormal basis, the orthonormal basis that we have chosen the u j's and the v j's have been very specially chosen to be related to within each other. So, when rho is less than n the infinite number of solutions are given by again j equal to 1 to rho 1 by s j b u j v j plus summation k equal to 1 to nu a alpha k phi k by varying the alpha k over all possible real values we get all the solutions of the system and this is completely determined again by the u j's and the v j's which are the basis for the range of a transpose and the v transpose and the range of a the s j the singular values and the phi k's which are the basis for the null space of a. So, by the orthonormal basis for the range of a transpose these are the v j's the range of a these are the u j's and the null space of a these are the phi k's and the singular values. And when the solutions are infinite in this case the unique optimal solution given by summation j equal to 1 to rho 1 by s j b u j v j is determined by is completely determined by the orthonormal basis for the range of A transpose, the range of A and the singular values. So, at least now we see that in the case when consistency conditions are satisfied all our answers involve the basis of range of A basis of range of A transpose and the basis if necessary basis for the null space of A. The consistency conditions come from the basis for the null space of A transpose. So, all these four bases that we have chosen play a very crucial role in determining a complete analysis of the system of equation. So, let us write again the case when B does not satisfy. consistency conditions 
then we will not write the full expressions again we will simply mention rho equal to n unique least square solution again determined by the orthonormal basis for the range of A transpose and the range of A. When rho is less than n infinite number of least square solutions determined by the orthonormal basis for range of A transpose the range of A the null space of A and of course, the singular values in all these cases the singular values come into the picture. And in the case infinite number of solutions the unique optimal least square solution is given by the basis for range of A transpose range of A and singular values. So, the moral of the story is that the four orthonormal basis that we have chosen for the range of A transpose for the null space of A for the range of A and the null space of A transpose together with the singular values together with special way we have chosen this orthonormal basis completely answer all our questions about the solution of the system explicitly. We again repeat the null space of A transpose appears in determining the consistency condition, the null space of A appears whether determining there are arbitrariness in the solution or not and the range of A and the range of A transpose always keep track of the main solution that we are looking for. These four bases are very important for us. Now, let us get back to the structure of the solution and get to the notion of the so called pseudo inverse of a matrix. So, let us get back, let us look at the expression summation j equal to 1 to rho 1 by s j b u j b j. If you look at all the varieties of cases we have studied this part is common in all the solutions whether there is an exact unique solution whether there are infinite number of unique solutions whether it is the unique optimal solution, whether it is the unique least square solution or whether the infinite number of least square solutions or the unique optimal least square solution. In all this, this is an essential common part okay. and eventually this is what we are extracting as the essence of all the solutions. So, recall that this is what we are looking for always our final answer for A x equal to B is take x to be this you cannot do anything better than this okay. of all if it is going to be exact solution there will be this will be an exact solution. If there are many exact solutions this will be the one which are the least length if there is only one exact solution this will be the unique exact solution. If there are only least square solutions and it is unique this will be the least square unique solution. If there are many least square solutions then this will be the unique optimal least square solution. So, this is in essence the answer the essential answer for the system of equations A x equal to B. So, now let us write this expression therefore, we will call it as x sol this is the solver of the system x sol okay. x sol I will again repeat x sol is unique solution when the uniqueness come from rho equal to n and the solution comes from and B satisfies consistency condition. 
So, when B satisfies contingency condition and rho equal to n this x all will be the unique solution. It will be the unique optimal solution when B satisfies consistency condition and rho e less than l and this will be I'll put a bigger this will be unique least square solution when b does not satisfy consistency condition and rho equal to n and finally, this will be the unique optimal least square solution when B does not satisfy consistency condition and rho e less than n. So, the same expression represents different things and the different cases. Therefore, that expression captures the essence of the solution in all the cases. So, we will <coughs> again look at x all which is summation 1 by s j b u j v j and we will now write it in a special form which is equal to summation j equal to 1 to rho 1 by s j v j b u j we will write the number b u j to the right of the vector and now that can be written as j equal to 1 to rho 1 by s j v j the inner product can be written as u j transpose b. And therefore, we can write this as summation j equal to 1 to rho 1 by s j v j u j transpose acting on b each term is multiplying b. So, we can combine using the distributive law for matrix multiplication this can be written as the sum matrix multiplying. Now, look at what is inside for each j v j belongs to R n because v j were basis for the range of A transpose therefore, they are living on the R n side and therefore, v j is n by 1 and u j belongs to R m and therefore, u j is m by 1 and therefore, u j transpose is 1 by m. And therefore, v j u j transpose will be an n by 1 matrix times an 1 by m matrix. So, is n by m matrix. V j u j transpose is an n by m matrix and that says if I multiply it by a scalar that will also be an n by m matrix. So, therefore, this v j u j transpose times 1 by a j s j is always a n by m matrix. Now, the sum involves rho terms each term is an n by m matrix. So, if I add rho of the n by m matrix again I will get an n by m matrix. So, that says if I add all these fellows. is an n by m matrix which we shall denote by a dagger and call this and call this as the uh, pseudo inverse. 
pseudo inverse of A. This is the pseudo inverse of A. So, we have A dagger is equal to summation j equal to 1 to rho 1 by s j v j u j transpose and hence this entire cell x sol can be written as x sol equal to hence x sol is equal to a dagger b. So, what does all that mean? In terms, if let us look at this whole thing from a different perspective. So, we have a system. So, let us put what does this mean? We have a system, we are looking at it from a system point of view. The system matrix is A and the inputs for the system are all from R n and when you put a x in input and there is an output they are all in R m and the output is given by A times x and A is an m by n matrix. So, this is how the matrix can be viewed as. So, the matrix A is a black box is an input output system in that system the whole system operation or action is controlled by this m by n matrix A and the inputs that are accepted into the system are vectors from R n and the outputs that are going to come out are vectors in R m. So, when we input a vector x the output is simply the vector x is pre multiplied by the matrix A since A is m by n and x is n by 1 the output A x is going to be in R m. Now, whenever we know the system it means we know the matrix A and therefore, whenever the input is known we can calculate the output. The question we are asking what is meant by solving A x equal to B means the following. Here I do not know x I am given what output B I want and then I, I have to determine the input x that will give this output. Now, what does x sol says? x sol is the output, is the required output. What do we mean by the required output? I am sorry, the required input. So, what does that mean? So, again you have this system A and then from B I have a new system A dagger which is an n by m matrix. So, when a <coughs> B is given in R m I input into this new system I get A dagger B which is the x sol and now I take this as the input will I get x will I get b the required out, uh, output I will get b if it is possible or if it is not possible to get any input which gets b then x all will give that input which will take you closest to b and among all such possible things x all will have the least length. So, it will get closest to b. So, a x all will be equal to b whenever there exists an input giving output b and a x all will 
get closest possible to B whenever there does not exist an input which gives B exactly, which gives output B exactly. And in both cases, XOL will have the least length among all such possible or among all such required inputs. So, it is like a control. I want to control the in output B by controlling the input. I want to control the system in such a way that I get the output B. I want to see how do I control by controlling the input. I would say that you can control by putting the input XOL and that is the best you can do. What do we mean by saying that is the best you can do? When you put the input XOL, if the output B we are looking for is a genuine output for the system, then XOL will definitely give that output B. There may be many inputs which may give the same out genuine output B you are looking for, but among all that XOL will have the least length. If by chance you are looking for an output for which it is not a genuine output that is there is no input for the system which is going to produce that output then XOL will be that input which will produce an output which is as close to B as possible. No other input can get anywhere closer to that output B. So, XOL is the best approximation for the answer that you are looking for. And if there are many such inputs which give the get take you same as close to B as possible, then the XOL we have given is the one that has the optimal length and still gives the closest to B. So, that is what is meant by the inverse system or the pseudo inverse system. So, if the system is A, a dagger is the pseudo inverse system and it tells you how to control the outputs. That is the way this has to be interpreted in terms of systems. Now, let us again look at these things in various ways. Okay. When you have the concept of a square matrix, you have the concept of an inverse, but in this context we have also introduced the notion of a pseudo inverse for any type of matrix m by n. In particular, if I take m equal to n, I have a square matrix and therefore, I can talk about its pseudo inverse. What is the connection between the pseudo inverse and the inverse for a square matrix? Okay. So, let us, so in the case of a square matrix, m equal to n. So, we have a square matrix A, we have the notion of an inverse of a matrix whenever A is invertible. Now, we have also a notion of pseudo inverse a dagger if a is invertible square matrix what is the connection between 
between A inverse and A dac because we have got uh, too many varieties of inverses. So, we have to make sure what we are talking about. So, let us analyze this question we shall show that in, in this case that is when A is an invertible matrix square matrix then a dagger is the same as A inverse, A dagger is the same as A inverse. The pseudo inverse and the original concept of inverse will tally. So, therefore, there is no confusion whether you talk about that inverse or this inverse both are same. Now, what happens is this notion of inverse, the notion we have got A inverse makes sense only for square matrices when they are invertible. However, the notion of A dagger makes sense for square matrices even when they are not invertible and even for rectangular matrices and when square matrices also when they are invertible also it makes sense and whenever they are invertible it ca carries on to the same notion as the old invertible uh, inverse. So, therefore, A dagger is a generalized notion of the inverse. Note therefore, the following points a the notion a inverse makes sense only when a is a square invertible matrix but a dagger makes sense for square matrices whether invertible or not and also for non square matrices and 3 whenever A inverse makes sense A dagger will be equal to A inverse. Thus, A dagger is a generalized notion of inverse of a matrix. A generalized notion of an inverse of a matrix. So, A dagger is a far reaching generalization of the notion of inverse. We can talk about the A dagger whether the matrix is square or not, whether the matrix is square and invertible or not, whether the matrix is rectangular or not. So, it makes in all these cases and whenever the classical notion of inverse makes sense the two will coincide. So, we shall now establish the fact that A dagger is equal to A inverse whenever A inverse makes sense. For this we will begin with some preliminaries. Let us take A as a square matrix say n by n. So, here m equal to n we can think of is a rectangular matrix, but where the number of rows is equal to number of columns. So, A when is A is invertible? A is invertible if rank of A is equal to N. So, therefore, rho is equal to N. So, what is the situation that we have? N is equal to M and rho equal to N. So, therefore, we have a matrix where the number of rows is equal to the number of columns and all of them are equal to the row. So, with this in mind let us look at what is the situation that we have. Because rho equal to m we will have 
how many consistency conditions are required for the system A x equal to b? We need m minus rho conditions and then we shall see that because m minus rho is 0 in this case, there is not going to be any consistency condition. So, the first thing that we get will be A x equal to b will have a solution for all b in R n. A x equal to b will have a solution for all b in R n and because rho equal to n we will be in the case that the solution is unique. Therefore, when rho equal to n equal to m we have a unique solution for the system for all b in R n and that unique solution will be written as a dagger b. Okay. So, when we will we'll again go through this carefully when m equal to rho we have no consistency conditions to be satisfied. No consistency conditions to be satisfied therefore, solution for all b exists to the system A x equal to b. Solution is unique since rho equal to n null space consists of only the 0 vector. Unique solution given by A dagger B for every B in R. But A x equal to B has unique solution x equal to A inverse B for every b in R n because a is invertible. Now, on the one hand we have the unique solution is given by a dagger b on the other hand we have given by a inverse. So, we have a dagger b is equal to a inverse b for every b in R n since the action of these two matrices is same on all the vectors we get a dagger equal to a inverse. So, whenever the A inverse exists we have that it is the same as the pseudo inverse, but the pseudo inverse makes sense even in the most general cases. In the next lecture we will go back to the basic fundamental questions that we raised in our first two lectures and take stock whether we have the answers to all these questions. Before we do that we will again review the solution concept that we have got in another viewpoint.